Over the last four years of using Linux full-time, I've discovered that I really like using terminal file managers. And over the last couple of years, my go-to terminal file manager has been Ranger. And I love Ranger. It's fantastic. It's customizable. It's fast enough. There's tons of extensions and stuff that you can use. Uh, you can customize the key bindings very easily. It's similar to kind of customizing them in that there's just a ton of stuff that you can do with it. But lately, I've been using a file manager called NNN, and I've really come to truly enjoy using it. So I thought what I'd do is go through and compare the two briefly, and then talk a little bit about why I've switched from Ranger to NNN. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's go ahead and jump in. So first, let's go ahead and look at Ranger. So this is the Ranger GitHub page. And Ranger is written in Python, almost exclusively in Python. And that turns a lot of people off. But really, I've never really had a problem with anything written in Python. I know technically it's slower than like Rust or C or any of the other programming languages, but I've never really had an experience where I've been completely turned off with something being so slow. The only example I can think of where something was kind of slower than I really expected to be was Castero, which is a podcast terminal application. That was a little slower than normal, but that was that's the only example I've ever used of I've seen where Python has really been a negative. But I know a lot of people dislike Python, so let's just put that out there. Ranger is written in Python. Now, this is what my oops, that's not the right one. This is what my Ranger looks like, and really, I've not done a ton of customization in terms of look and feel. The only thing I've done over the last few years is just go through and add a whole bunch of key bindings so I can go to, let's say I want to jump to one of my external hard drives, I just can hit the key binding. I have to wait for the hard drive to spin up, obviously, but eventually it will. And then it will just go to that key bind or that, that location. Uh, same thing for bulk rename, uh, bulk delete, and so on and so forth. I have key bindings for those things and also, you know, and it just makes it so easy. So eventually it did show up there. Uh, that didn't have anything to do with Ranger being slow. That's just because I have a mechanical hard drive that you know, takes forever to spin up. So if I go back home here, there's just a ton of things that I can do with this. So let's just say I'm in my wallpapers app. And I wanted to go through and select a whole bunch of things. And then I could just do bulk rename. And, and I could go through and actually rename every single one of these, just like that. And then it would go through and save those files with the new names. That is really cool. And it's something that I've used a lot. One of the other things I really like about Ranger is that it's easy to customize. So if we take a look at the Ranger configuration file, which is located in .config Ranger, and then we can actually just go ahead and look at it like this, you can see that it's very easy to configure. So there's a lot of stuff here that reminds you a lot of either i3 or Vim in terms of configuration syntax. So you'll see a lot of things like set view mode to a certain thing. You'll see a lot of things like um, if we go down here, here to the bottom, a lot of this stuff looks almost precisely like what you'd see in a VimRC file. It's named a little bit differently, but the key, it's kind of the same. And it's very easy to configure, very easy to get your mind around. And I really, truly do like that. So if you're into Ranger, the things that you need to know is that it's very extensible, very easy to customize, is quick enough, and has some features that are really good. So if you noticed earlier, when we were in the pictures folder here, we go down to walls. You can see there's actually image previews. Now, this is one of the areas where ranger kind of falls down mostly because the image previous thing is built in but it's also kind of hacky and it also is very terminal dependent so this right here is st and it works just fine in st so if i quit this and quit out of this and start up we'll just go to we go here and we're in alacrity now you can see that there's no terminal image terminal uh image preview and that is pretty much your experience a lot of the times with Ranger because sometimes image preview will work in Alacrity, sometimes it won't. Sometimes it will work in ST, sometimes it won't. What causes it to work and not work, I have no clue. And I'm pretty sure nobody else does either. It's just a really weird quirk of Ranger where sometimes your image previews won't work. So that was my biggest problem with Rangers that 
it's sometimes inconsistent on how it works in certain terminals specifically with the image previews it, it's just really weird and it's something that if you rely on image previews so like let's say i wanted to set this wallpaper here as a or set this wallpaper here as my default wallpaper i have a key binding for that but how would i know that that's the one that i want to choose you know because it's just a, the file name is not at all helpful so i'd actually have to go through and you know open that up and then hit my key binding to actually set it that's a not a great way to do it. So, and you'll also notice that once you've opened up that preview, if you change files, it opens up another preview window instead of just you know going through them. And that's also not all that great. It's something that kind of really bothered me, and it more often than not, it just made me just go through and use a image preview application like SXIV. And where the things just kind of just are meant to be shown as a picture. So the reason why I just decided I was going to move away from Ranger was because of this image preview stuff. So let's go ahead then and take a look at NNN. So if we open up NNN, it's just as simple as as this. And this is not really what NNN looks like out of the box. There's no icons here for one when you first download it. Basically, this is what you get. And you can navigate this just like you can in Vim using the Vim keys and stuff. Now you can see there's no image preview here because they handle image previews differently. And I'll get to that here in a few minutes. Like I said, you can navigate just like you can in Ranger using the Vim keys and so on and so forth. You can multiple select things by using the space bar. You can create your own key bindings and stuff to go to certain directories, do certain things, bulk rename and stuff so on and so forth it's it's all there so really the question you have to ask then is so if the similarities are uh quite prevalent then why would i switch and the answer to that question is twofold one it is faster so this is written in uh c and bash scripting so it's mostly c there's but there's quite a bit of bash uh, so it, you, you will notice that it, it does move between things faster and it does load things faster the second reason is that it has a much more extensive plugin system. So I didn't really talk much about the plugins in Ranger, but if we go through here to the Ranger uh, wiki and we look at the Ranger plugins, we can see that there's a few. There's 15 of them. You know, it's good. There's some things to do MP3 conversion. Uh, there's stuff here for Git and uh, diff and stuff. The stuff that, you know, FZF is here. So, you know, it's. Not as if there's no plugins for Ranger. There are, and there's probably the ones that you want, right? There's not, you know, you're not going to, you're, Dragon is here, so you can actually drag and drop stuff. It's the, the, the main stuff that you actually need. But if you if we go to the NNN stuff here, and we look at the plugins, these are all plugins. And there are a couple dozen of these things. I'm not exactly sure, I, you know, I didn't go through and actually count them, but... You know, there's just tons of them. It just goes on and on and on and on. There's just tons of them. I and mean, some of them are really weird. For example, there was one up here called Guten Read. It's where you can browse, download, and read from the Project Gutenberg. I don't know why that's in a file manager, but it's there. You know, so there's a ton of them. There's a few of them that are like kind of like that. But uh, for the most part, these things are really useful. So there's a whole bunch of different ones for fuzzy finding. There's some to update the plugins themselves. There's stuff for KDE Connect. There's stuff for uh, launching. GUI applications, there's stuff for uh, MP3 conversion and playing music and so on and so forth. There's just tons of them, right? So that really allowed me to go through and do quite a bit with NNN that I wasn't able to do with Ranger, specifically around previews. So let's talk a little bit more about plugins, specifically previews. So Probably the biggest downside of NNN is that it does not have a configuration file, like, at all. There's not one. There never will be one. It's just not the way they do things. And that's a little disappointing because it makes things quite a bit harder. So in order to configure NNN, you have to use environment variables. So if we go to back here and we quit this out and we see you back into my home directory and I'm using ZSH, all of my environment variables are located in the zshn file. So if I vim into .zshenv, 
will see all of my environment variables. Now, if you're using Bash, you're going to be looking for Bash profile. If you're using Fish, you'll have to go to your Fish your Fish configuration file where you'll find more of your environment variables. Now, basically, if you don't know what an environment variable is, is basically it's one thing that sets a default for the entire system. So, for example, up here I have export editor nvim. That's basically telling my Linux system when I Using a file that can be edited, I want it to open up an NVim. A lot of times the default is Nano, a lot of times the default is Vim or Vi or whatever, but in my case, I want it to be NVim. Same thing with the browser. If I open up a link, I want it to open up in Firefox. So for NNN, all of our configuration stuff is done here. Now, if you want to control colors and stuff, there's a t there's a way to do your colors and stuff right here. In this. I know I haven't actually changed any of the colors here because I just let it I just let it inherit stuff from the uh, terminal itself, but you can define your colors here. You can define uh, other certain characteristics of how NNN looks here. But basically what I've done and what you have to do is if you want to go through and use the NNN plugins. So first of all, you download the plugins to a certain folder and then you can just go through and use them. You have to ex for this specific environment variable. And then you just go through and say, uh, for the letter P, I want to use the plugin preview-tabbed. For the letter F, I want to use the plugin FZ open. For the letter I, I want to use image view. For the number one, I want to use wall. And number two, I want to use wall two. And I'll, I'll talk about wall and wall two here in just a minute. But basically what this means is if we open up another terminal here and go to NNN, so for example, let's just say I want to use the fuzzy finder. So I can go through and let's just enter into my pictures folder here. So let's just do uh, semicolon, which tells NNN that you want to use a key binding to get into a plugin and then use the letter F. And then I can just go through and search for something like walls. Now I'll take everything that has walls in it. So it's it's a, just a regular fuzzy finder, and then you can just go through and navigate things with your key, your arrow keys. And let's just say I wanted to open up I don't know this one here, and that will just you know open up the file, and then you can just hit Q to quit. So that's fuzzy finding. And like I showed you earlier, there's a few fuzzy finders that will go through your history, open up files, and so on and so forth. So another one that I have is preview tab. Now this is really where NNN kind of shines. So let's go ahead and go into my walls folder here. And let's just go here. It doesn't really matter. Let's find one that has a whole bunch of actual things in it. This one will work. So let's say I wanted to preview these. Let's go ahead and uh, mix this smaller. In Ranger, depending on what terminal I am in, I just hover over, I just hover, hover over these and I would preview. But like I said, that's kind of finicky. In NNN, in order to do this, I have to do semicolon and then P, and that will actually go through and preview that image. Now, what's cool about this is that because it uses SXIV, I can just go back through and refocus on NNN, and I can actually cycle through these, and it will preview every single one. That's really quite cool, right? And it works. So that is how preview works. The other plugin that I use, which is image, will just preview that one image. It won't cycle through them. Uh, now, one of the cool plugins that NNN has is the ability to set your wallpaper. Now, I've went through and coded this into Ranger as well, but this comes out of the box, you know, as long as you have plugins enabled. So let's just say I wanted to set this. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Just let's say I wanted to set this wallpaper here as my wallpaper. Now, it uses nitrogen to do this. Now... The reason why I have two is because by default, it will just set your wallpaper to span both your monitors. So if you have two monitors, it just spans it across both of them. And most of these wallpapers are meant to be shown on a 1080p screen, not a large wide screen spanning two monitors. So for me, I just went through and cloned the first wallpaper thing and then changed the little script so that I can set for both my wallpapers so, or both my monitors. So if I do semicolon one that changes the wallpaper it looks like this and then you won't be able to see this but i could do semicolon two and my wallpaper on my other monitor changed as well so that's how that works and it's really cool those plugins really make nnn super special 
Now, like I said, the biggest problem I have with NNN is that it's configured through the environment variables. That makes it really hard. Uh, not only because there's a certain syntax that you have to use here, but it just doesn't seem that there's as much you can do with it because there's not like an, a configuration file that you can get in into and, you know, tinker with stuff. The way NNN does stuff through the plugin stuff, you do all that stuff through Bash. All of these plugins and stuff, they're Bash scripts. So you can basically create your own Bash script and then associate that with a plugin, and it will allow you to create your own plugins. And that's how you extend NNN to do cool new things. Other than that, the biggest difference between NNN and Ranger is probably the look. So if we open up Ranger here again, you'll notice that you can see where you are in the tree all the time. So if I could just go to pictures again and walls and like this, I can see the previous folder over here, right? And there's always a, you know, you pretty much always know where you are, and it's, it's kind of like a, a tree-based system, and you can only, always see this. With NNN, you're only seeing the file you're in. Now, you can see the path that you're in, but you're only seeing the file that you're, you're or the the directory that you're located in. And that's a, that's a, that's one way of doing it, and it's not something that truly really bothered me, but it's something to get used to, because it looks very simple. But basically, the way... And then works is that it does things by tab. So if you notice these one, two, three, four up here, these are basically tabs. Now they call them something different, but if if I go to two and then go back to my home directory and then go back to one, you can see I have now have both of these things open. And I can do that for three, two. So I can go to my music directory here and then go back to two, three, one and so on and so forth. And I can transfer files between these very easily just by selecting them and yanking them just like you would in Ranger. With Ranger, you have tabs, like you can do tabs, and it's easy to do tabs, but it doesn't feel like it was really meant to be used as tabs, but you can actually go through and do quite a bit more with Ranger because you can also set up dual pane mode, similar to what you could do with Midnight Commander. So that's really cool. That's not something that you can do with NNN. So uh, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more complex, I just feel like Ranger is definitely the more complex of them out of the box because ev all the features are there. Like it has a few plugins, but most of the features that you'll need are inside Ranger. And you can go through and do a ton of things with it. You can go through and do the dual pane mode. You can do, you know, change the look and feel quite a bit more than you can do with NNN. But if you're looking for something that's more, even more extensible, I think NNN is something that you can build up kind of from the, you know, the bottom up because you can go through and just create as many script, you know, bash scripts as you want to do as many things as you want to interact with your files and, you know, kind of the sky is the limit. So that was a little rambly video comparing Ranger and NNN. There are tons of stuff that I didn't cover, but the reason why I want to talk about it is because I'm switching to NNN and the biggest reason I talk is because of what I said with the image previews. The image previews in Ranger are very finicky, so I've just decided to switch to NNN. I also like the idea that I can go through and create a whole bunch of Bash scripts, and that will allow me to interact with my files in a whole bunch of different ways. Now, you can do the whole Bash script thing with Ranger as well. I don't want to give the impression that because the whole Bash script interacting with files through a terminal file manager is specific to NNN. That's not the case. I just like the fact that NNN has a whole bunch of them created for me out, out of the box. Or I mean, almost out of the box. And that means that there's tons of stuff that I don't actually have to go through and do afterwards. So I'm switching to NNN. In the comments below, let me know if you use a terminal file manager. And if so, which one? I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching. You can follow us on Twitter at the Linux Cast. You can follow us on Facebook at the Linux Cast. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Patrons in tiers 2, 3, 4, and 5 get early access to some of our videos. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check out patreon.com slash linuxcast. I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons, Devon, Marcus, Maglin, Donnie, Sven, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks, everybody, for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.